Hello, friends. I'm Susan Axelrod, the Confidence Coach. Welcome to another real, raw, and righteous episode of how to live a confident and calm life. Today is a special update episode. It has been exactly one year that I have lived an alcohol-free life. And we are going to talk today about how that experience has been for me and with my dear friend, colleague, and cohort, Nadine Searle, the Calmer Self Coach, and your cancer coach, we are going to keep it real as we always do. Hello, Nadine. Hello, Susan. So good to talk to you again and on this topic that has proved to be quite a big one for us, hasn't it? We've talked about it before a couple of times, and here we go again. It has indeed. Uh, this podcast series came up organically, as does everything in my work and in Nadine's, uh, out of personal conversations that we had, where basically one day I said to Nadine, hey, this would make a good podcast discussion. Would you be willing to talk about this publicly? And from that time to this, we have talked about every single thing. And boy, is there more to come. So the first time um, we talked about the topic of life and alcohol use was in June of 2023. For um, dating purposes, this episode is coming to you in September of 2024, but I wanna say very clearly the topic and the material are timeless. And so um, in June of 23, we had a conversation about um, alcohol use and how it affects us. Uh, Nadine had only recently been diagnosed with cancer and um, or not so recently had been diagnosed with cancer. You were already six or eight months into that cancer yeah, journey, I believe. Yeah, I was going through my treatment. Yeah, going through your treatment. And um, then subsequently, we decided to do a long episode titled Life Without Alcohol. And um, and it, I be tagging both of these podcast conversations in the show notes here. And today we're coming to you with an update on how life has been without alcohol. So Nadine, what a topic of conversation. I looked, I did a little bit of research. In 2019, the National Institute on, this is in America, the National Institute on Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism, part of the National Institute of Health, the NIH, is um, did a survey and that showed one in four Americans, 18 years or older, reported they had been binge drinking in the last month, one in four, 25% of Americans. Subsequently, there have been many surveys done by national organizations, global organizations on the increased use of alcohol as a result of COVID. So much has come from this um, disease, liver disease, death and dying from alcohol related issues and in particular, Nadine, what children and families have suffered as a result of increased alcohol use in a family, especially during COVID. So there's many uh, surveys, but the research is beginning to show something very, very clear. And that is alcohol kills. It's not that we haven't known this, it's that we're get doing having more research, scientific studies and data showing this reality. For those of you who know me, I was affected by this reality myself. My beloved husband uh, got into difficulty with alcohol and died as a result of alcohol use. After that happened, I had already been using alcohol, not that much myself. I was what I would call Nadine, like a regular drinker, you know, for me, it might have been a few glasses of wine a week on the weekends, a beer and burger or a scotch in the evening or, you know, 
wine at a party or definitely martinis. If I went out, that would have been my drink of choice. But as my journey transpired, I realized I was using alcohol less and less. In September of 2023, on my wedding anniversary, I was having dinner with a friend. My husband had been gone for a year, less than a year. And I was having dinner with a friend and I had one of those great martinis. And the next day I was perusing a certain women's group on Facebook and they were talking about uh, alcohol-free drinks. And I read this thread with curiosity, like, oh, there seems to be this culture of people becoming alcohol free. And on that day, I wondered to myself, what would it be like to be alcohol free? And that was part of our conversation that we had in that second episode. I made a decision at on that day, in that time, to experiment with an alcohol-free life. I had obvious deep personal reasons for doing this, but the top of the surface reason, Nadine, was that I wanted to be an ally because I had learned what I had learned about the use of alcohol and that there were people who could not, you know, not use alcohol um, if it was around. And it was hard for them to be in a drinking space and not drinking. And so I decided that I would become an ally. And on that day, I made that commitment. Over the course of the uh, first part of the year, I found it to be difficult. And we're gonna talk more about that, Nadine, with your experience as well. Um, mostly for me, not because of the use, but because of habituation just because it felt normal. Um, I watched our last podcast, Nadine, and you talked about that as well, how elegant it is to have a cocktail. And, you know, for me holding it, you know, a glass of wine or being with family or friends or whatever. But um, there has been a surprising end to this story. But before I get there, Nadine, I wanna ask you, what are your thoughts uh, so far about this discussion? Yeah, I think you've covered so many things there, Susan, that are really important. And the message, like you say, we have more statistics now. We're learning all the time as a community, aren't we? Not individually as well, but we know so much more. And I, I think back to the days when, you know, I come from a family of people that drank all the time, you know, so people used to drink and drive, for heaven's sake, you know, things like that. It was I say normal, accepted, I don't know the right word, but it was, wasn't it? It was in our culture. It definitely was in my lifestyle growing up. Um, and that has changed. There is more awareness and people are making choices much more, you know, thinking about it and choosing, like we have shared for ourselves, for our own reasons, we've made choices. You know, I've shared very openly, you know, that I drank um, from a very young age. You talked about teenagers drinking. You know, I started drinking a lot at a very young age. And um, I thought it was okay, you know, I thought my body, I thought I was invincible, my body can cope with it, everything's great. And I suppose young people do that, don't they? This is what happens, you know, we don't worry about the effects because we're young. And like you said earlier as well, how it has an effect on not just you, the person drinking, but the families. And you mentioned COVID and how that changed a lot of things for families, and it did. And I think with a background in nursery school teaching as well, you know, when COVID hit and the um, lockdown came, I thought of those little children that were going to be locked inside these houses with all sorts of things going on. You know, I was very big in child protection when I worked at the nursery school. And I just thought, you know, this is going to have an effect. And people were drinking more. Why wouldn't they? I had friends say to me, oh, I don't have to go to work. I don't have to get up. I don't have to, you know, I can have a drink at night. It's like Christmas every day, they said, you know. And there is that. I don't want to say it's all doom and gloom because to me, alcohol is associated with celebration, being lighthearted, being free, you know, right or wrong. That's how I feel. Um, so when people were saying to me, oh, I've got no reason not to drink kind of thing, you know, you go, yeah, why not? And you, it is something we need or I'd encourage people just to think about and really, really think about the choices because there are consequences, aren't there, without a doubt, you know. 
even when you just have a few little drinks and it's lighthearted, it's not always that way that it stays. So that's the kind of thing again to just be mindful. You also have your conscious decisions, be your conscious mind, um, and think about things because without a doubt, as soon as you have a drink you're going to have another one. It's very hard. You know, you change. This is why, this is why I used to say I like to have alcohol because it changes what's going on in my head. It makes me feel different. That's one of the reasons that I used to turn to it and like it so much. Um, and I've got to be honest with you, Susan, that I still have this going on in my mind. I miss the joy that I got from alcohol. I miss the celebration um, like you said, it's the rituals, the habits, that kind of thing. I know that I don't have to have alcohol to have those things. I know there's other ways and I experience them a lot, but I still have this. I'm, I'm questioning it a lot myself at the moment. You know, is there an attachment? Is it habit? Is it addiction? What is it that I still have this longing and this um, little bit of need? And I just want to quickly, for full disclosure, say that yesterday I was at an event where we were celebrating the wonderful project that I've been involved in, um, a calendar to raise awareness and funds for breast cancer now, which is a big charity. Um, and it was a celebration. It was a wonderful occasion. And I went with some very special people. My sister was one of them. And she bought a little group of us, a little four or five of us, a bottle of Prosecco for us to celebrate the occasion. And there you go. What did I do? You know, I I felt, and this is not peer pressure because there wasn't any, but I just went with it. I wanted to. I had a little glass of Prosecco. And, you know, I'm not going to give myself a hard time about that. It was a little sip. It was to join in the celebration. I love that. Pop a cork, have a lovely glass, like you said before, the glass is the, the way it is. So, again, I'm questioning, did I really need that? Did I make the right decision? I'm not giving myself a hard time about it. I have not vowed to be alcohol free. I think I've said that many times, haven't I? But it was really interesting. Go, this is what I did. In that situation, that's the choice I made. So I am very much, it was only yesterday, so I'm really, really. Yeah, lucky. this is, wow, this is so big. <laughs> so when people watch our other two um, episodes, number one, in the first episode, you said, I'm making this decision because I'm on chemotherapy, my liver is working hard enough, why am I going to aggravate it further? So it could be said, Nadine, how amazing and uh, like almost, almost profound that you, your mind told you you could have a drink being through the cancer journey to this point that you didn't connect that dot. You didn't, yes. do, you, do you know what I'm saying? You didn't connect yes, exactly. the dot of, yes. oh, my liver is working hard enough through the medication and the treatment. Yeah. Why would I impact it further? So I want to celebrate that. That's crazy when you think about it that way, right? It, it could be, couldn't it? That maybe I'm not so fearful. You know, I had actually, and it might be, and I didn't tell you said it, I didn't connect that at all. I had an appointment with my beautiful acupuncturist last week and she can tell from the state of my toenails what's going on with my liver. Um, and she pointed out, she could show me that the liver is healing and doing really well. Maybe subconsciously there was something in my mind going, oh, I'm doing okay, I can have a little drink. And I also, as I said earlier, one drink always leads to another. Um, I don't know if I said it exactly that way, but it didn't for me yesterday. I had my little, I probably had half a little glass. Um, and that was fine. I loved that little celebration. That was fine. Didn't lead to more. So there is a difference. You know, I can, like you say, I felt I could do that. And that is something to celebrate, isn't it? I could do it. I've left it alone. It's fine. Um, and that, and that's good. And that is how I feel about it. That is the, the thing that happened without me really thinking about it. That's what I did. And that's, it is a cause for celebration because I'm, I'm changing all the time, like everybody does. So, yeah. So there's a lot to say here, none the least of which is, as you indicated yourself earlier, with your past drinking usage, I call it use, I don't even call it drinking alcohol anymore. I call it using alcohol because it is a drug. It is a substance um, that destroys. So with your past, it could be said, what's the truth here? Am I telling myself a story? 
yeah. right? But we're, this is part of exactly what this conversation is about, or is it possible that I can just have, you know, uh, yeah. that drink at that time for that celebration purposes, et cetera, and so on. Um, I love this conversation exactly right now to be so bold and brazen as to you know say these things out loud i love that you shared honestly with us because guess what uh nadine if you were in addiction if you were in addiction addiction would have lied i, I really feel that that is right You're addiction right. would have lied by withholding even in this conversation the most ultimate straight direct honest i'm i don't know if you speak with anyone else in your life like you speak with me here <laughs> no i don't think i do how surreal is that i don't think i do you bring that out in me and i and i love that and you're absolutely right you know in addiction as you put it i would have lied I'm also thinking back to something I've shared quite openly as well, that I have this pattern of shame and hiding things. So again, that shows me that maybe that's releasing a little bit. And I'm really glad for that um, because I, you know, feel, I'm not feeling ashamed of that. And I, and again, I don't feel the need to hide it. I'm sharing it because it's true. I'm sharing it because that's my point of view. It's my reality, but also for other people to maybe think, Oh, you know, it is okay. Maybe, or maybe the other people are thinking, no, that's not okay. Well, you know, it could be, people. we we would have to ask a question um, for you. Um, it's been about two years since you were diagnosed. Yeah, yeah, so, nearly, yeah. yeah nearly two years. So, yeah. um, you know, immediately the terror, we have lots of conversations about that. People can listen to the fear, the terror, uh, of of chemotherapy that you shared with us um, made it an easy decision to uh, not drink alcohol. But you're, um, we know without a doubt, Nadine, without a doubt, it is proven, it is researched. When you stop using alcohol for 30 days, you are better. Your organs are better. Your body is better. One of the things I'm going to post in the notes is. Um, one of the most amazing conversations I've ever heard, Mel Robbins uh, interviewed uh, a specialist on this, and uh, I'm going to post it. It's a podcast. Honestly, I've listened to it many times myself. I've shared it countless times, what alcohol does to your body. Mel Robbins says, basically, it's like taking a bottle of rubbing, rubbing alcohol and drinking it down, and the doctor's like, yep. <laughs> and so um, you, your body is so clear, it's so clean, you're in such a conscious state, right? And so from that state of being, you made a decision. I want to talk more about what you said about the celebration thing. I'm, I'm parked yeah. that for a second. I'm, I'm, I want to yeah. get to that. But yeah. I want to say thank you for once again bringing it in the most honest, real, raw way and sharing that here. Uh, how are you feeling at this moment? Do you know what? I have I have today felt quite tired, quite exhausted. Now, who knows? That could be because I had some alcohol. My body is still not totally healed. You know, I don't know. Again, I'm questioning and looking at that. But I do know that when I do something, especially something that I'm really excited about and enjoy, I am tired after. That might be the new me. That might be the way that I am forever. But I am tired. So again, I'm aware of that. I'm looking after myself. Self-care has been massive today. Um, but that is kind of that yin-yang, if you like, you know, busy, busy, excited, have a wonderful time. The next day is a rest day. You know, that that might be fine. I mean, I am very, very aware of there was some alcohol in the mix there. So being, you know, keeping an eye on my own body and my own system, because I have learned, like you say, there's so much out there to learn more about alcohol. The fact that I'm older, I'm a woman, there's hormones in the mix here, you know, never mind all the chemotherapy and everything, that my body doesn't tolerate alcohol like it did when I was younger. So being aware and mindful and conscious of that, you know, again, is that a wise decision? You know, my body isn't dealing with it the way that it did for so many reasons. So again, just to be aware of that when you make your choices. So, so, so there's so much, yeah, so much to consider, isn't there? So um, 
do you feel proud of yourself for sharing this truth with us? <laughs> Interesting word, proud. Um, do you know what I do, actually? Because as I say, I haven't sat in addiction. I haven't sat in shame. I've been totally honest, like you say, real and raw. Um, I did what I did. You know, I'm honestly not giving myself a hard time about it. And I'm so glad that I'm not. Um, there's no guilt or shame involved here at all. And it's, for me, it's, it's like a study. It's almost like I can take myself above it and look back and go, what was that all about then? No, no, not too many emotions involved with it. Just it is what it is. If that yeah, makes sense. a little neutrality. So, so I want so yeah, it. I'll have the proud bit. Thank you for that. I'll take that. And I'll Good. You're welcome. Take, take it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I want to, I want to say a few things. Um, For someone who's listening to this in high use, I call it disordered use of alcohol in high, um, there's the question for, for the self, you know, could I take that one drink? And then obviously, um, because you've been clear and clean and clear for almost two years now, near on, um, so you could and you didn't have to have more. Um, these are questions uh, we must ask ourselves. Um, I would like to ask a question. Your sister brought a bottle of Prosecco. Did she know about your journey to being alcohol, of being alcohol free and why? Really good question. And do you know what? The honest truth is I'm not 100% certain. I would like to think that she did know and it's not an issue, but then I'm not sure how how she's really took on board what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. Um, and that might be down to how much I have shared with her, how much yes. I with her, how important it is to me. Very interesting because you would think, wouldn't you, you know, we're sisters, we like that, um, that she knows everything about me inside out. But it's really interesting that it's not always the way. I, I probably talk to you in a more deep and honest way than I do with her, in, interestingly enough. And we don't even, you know, we're so many miles apart and everything. So it's, it, and again, I get I'm it. I want to say, yeah. I understand that. Of yeah, course, I'm, I understand. I'm questioning, I'm questioning that now because I don't want anyone to think she was trying to sabotage me. Of course, me. but, you know, yeah. that this brings up the point. Of course, I understand speaking intimately with family members. You know, I got my own siblings. I got my own kids. I, you know, my cousins. I mean, speaking intimately with family members is not easy. I just did a, a, a video called why is it so hard to speak to our adult children? And so I asked that question. Um, I have two sisters I love more than anyone in the world, uh, uh, except my children, of course, and my nieces and nephews. I love all my family members. But, and your sister, this is not about her personally, it probably uh -huh. might be more about what you have shared because um, it happened here to me. I have been very clear with my kids. I made a choice to be alcohol free and they know why. And um, everybody who knows me at this point knows I have made an intentional choice to be alcohol free. Alcohol kills your body. And if you're one of the unlucky ones of whom there are countless, alcohol actually kills you. So I'm living a clear, clean and conscious life in commitment to being alcohol free. And yet only a month or two ago, my own daughter, I said, if you're coming for dinner, bring a bottle of wine, whatever you wanna drink for yourselves, cause I don't have any here. And my own daughter, whom I love more than anyone in the world, there was this much left in the wine bottle and said, oh, I'll just leave this here for you. There you go. Yeah. At that very moment, I was already in conscious awareness. Like, why? Why are you leaving that here for me? And I was like, OK, I didn't make a big deal. I didn't say anything. It sat in my fridge. And I, I thought I said to her, even then, I think I remember I said, oh, I could cook with it. And it sat in my fridge for a day and another day and another day. And like you, like we're talking about keeping it real here, I was like, would I die if I had a glass of wine? No, yeah. I wouldn't die. Uh, am I going to be driving? No. Um, would I enjoy it? 
Probably, I would assume that I would. Um, was it a kind I liked? Yes. Um, well, am I going to have it? Why wouldn't I have it? Why might I? I was really, even though I'm not in disordered use of alcohol, I was in awareness of using alcohol. And I decided, you know, first of all, it's strange that she left it here. I haven't spoken with her about this yet. And secondly, why didn't I say to her, Sarah, you know that I'm alcohol free. Why would you suggest yeah. leaving that here? I didn't say that. And thirdly, the third day I threw it out. I, I didn't need to have wine sitting in my fridge. I do like to cook with white wine, but for some reason I decided to throw it out. So I would say to you, now I wanna make a connection back we love our sisters. This isn't personal. I never met your sister. I'm sure she's one of the best people in the entire world. I know she certainly has been in the way she has supported you. But I would ask, you know, why would someone, a sister or anyone in the small group, bring a bottle of alcohol to celebrate when clearly alcohol is very bad for people on a cancer journey? Not to be judging or criticizing, but to a simply uh explore like my own family member also did and yeah. so do you do you do you understand the question I, that i'm asking i really i really get that and you're really this is you know I, this is therapy in action isn't it because i'm thinking all the more as you're talking because i think i honestly think, now thinking back the way that i talked about going to this celebration and everything I honestly think I was going, oh, we'll have a little drinky, we can celebrate that kind of thing. That's my language, that's the way I talk. So I might have even said it. Oh. Um, and, that, and that's really interesting, isn't it? Because I wouldn't be going, well, I can't. I haven't. Like you clearly stated, I'm alcohol free and everything. I never have said that out loud. Right. I've never really stated it. And, oh. it, it, you know, and also, it, it, it's a bigger question you brought up to me there as well, because I have this all the time with, especially anything to do with cancer, you know, there were so many coffee mornings and cake and coffee fundraisers all the time, you know. And I always go, why would you have cake? You know, it's full of sugar, you know, when, you, when you're when you cancer. So I've had this going on quite often. You know, why would there be alcohol? Why would you have cake? But, but people do it all the time, don't they? Interesting. So, isn't it really interesting? And you really need to be very clear in your own mind and be clear in how you communicate with other people to make sure that, that is a clear message because it really isn't. And actually I had right, the, I think it was my first session of chemotherapy, I think. Um, I got given a lovely goodie bag from the chemo nurses, which was beautiful, a bunch of things in it, but there were some sweets in it and there was sugar in it. And I questioned straight away, oh, sugar, oh, surely not. And the, the one of the chemotherapy nurses gave me a long, long talk about sugar this that and the other I can't remember I've got to be honest I can't remember a lot of it but she was from a medical point of view not demonizing sugar when you have cancer she had her theory all worked out I understood it at the time and I sort of saw her point of view but I still have again you know should we be eating cakes you know it's all of those kinds we're gonna of have to do another episode because I'm yeah. completely yeah uninformed on uh, the use of yeah. sugar and cancer so continue yeah, please yeah. So, so there's so much isn't there I, i'm learning so much all the time and as you can tell i don't know it all totally i you know all totally still, but but it just these kind of ideas i've tried you know i've been really i've shared this with you personally but on these conversations too how much i'm looking after myself better nutritionally exercise wise alcohol's a part of that obviously you know um, so I'm mindful much more of what I was. And and I know that I wasn't looking after myself that well most of my life. So this is, and again, you know, it's the, it's the thinking cancer has made me think differently and feel differently. And I'm grateful for that. Um, but it's it's so interesting. And I, I just love that, you know, I'm thinking to myself, oh, you know, that might have been in my language, in my... Even right. So that language. that is very yeah. interesting. Um, you know, I hope when I'm your sister's... Yeah. I hope when your sister sees this, she won't take it personally, because this is so not personal. We are oh, no. literally uh, universally healing in these conversations and also by our willingness to be so bold and, you know, bear here. Um, I pray uh, that others will be served. And so now um, I want to connect the doc back to something that you said. Um, uh, by the way, um, you said um 
you need to be clear in your own mind yeah. and articulate clearly to others. And then yeah. you said, yeah. I never said, you know, maybe I wasn't clear enough, but I, I want to also say now we definitely need to talk about this idea of a celebration. How can you have a celebration without, without, without alcohol? And yeah. how yeah. does alcohol um, enhance a celebration? And you said, gosh, now that you bring it up, I may have even said, oh, we'll have a little drink or, you know, yeah. it, uh, sort of uh, mindlessly uh, recalling, uh, um, like recalling uh, or evoking uh, the habituated uh, model of celebration, habit of celebration that you had. So that's, that's very interesting. So um, again, speaking for myself, um, I started in September and the first thing that came up was Thanksgiving. Uh, my family, we've always been wine drinkers. My mother, we had the magnets, uh, the t-shirts, the aprons, all the wine references, drinking wine, uh, even though I never thought of her as a, a overuser of wine per se, but I wonder if she was, but I never thought of her that way. I don't think there were indicators as such. It was just a big joke. And so I knew I would be going to family Thanksgiving that year and uh, not drinking. And I wondered to myself, what will it be like? How will that go? And I didn't make a big deal. I didn't say anything. I hadn't announced this to anybody yet. I wasn't even sure I, I really how it would go if I would be able to do it after I made a, a decision to experiment with this. And so as it happened, as I have indicated before, you know, people, hey, do you want red or white? Oh, no, I'm fine. Thank you. Basically, I just said, no, thank you. I drank water or properly just water and and the uh, entire holiday went by. It was like there was nothing notable about it at all. Uh, and then um, other celebrations that I've been at, my niece's PhD graduation, um, other family parties or friend parties or whatever, um, it's gotten easier and easier um, for me from the most important thing, which is the habituated use. I make um, an analogy to stopping smoking cigarettes, which I also did uh, in my 30s, the hardest part for me was the habituated use of nicotine uh, in my car. By that point, I was pretty much only smoking in my car. And then I was completely, you know, my car was associated, get in, light up, get in, light up. And not when the kids were in there, of course, but, um, and that was the hardest part to break. Likewise with this, for you, the yeah. celebration connection. And yeah. you even, um, you know, you said you miss the joy, um, yes. you know, and it, you talked yes. about this association. And so more for you to think about and consider. Isn't it? Yeah, it's, that, so, it's so interesting. Yeah. That day, uh, I, I guess it was just yesterday, maybe you said, what if yes. she had brought sparkling cider or sparkling yes. um, pink sparkling water or whatever it's called, lemonade or something. I wonder, and you still had your champagne glasses or a little, whatever you drank, you yeah. know, I wonder yeah. if she had produced a bottle of uh, sparkling wine or spark, uh, you know, non-alcoholic or sparkling cider or whatever it's called. I wonder how that would have gone for you. Yeah, yeah, a very interesting question. And again, I've said to you before, and I'll, I'll address it now because it's come up and it's perfect timing. Um, I have a bit of an issue with alcohol-free drinks as such. In my mind, it's, it's a little bit like, and I'll say it this way because it will help you understand, it's like a vegetarian say, saying, I want a meat-free sausage. It's almost like, well, why don't you just have vegetables? Why do you want something that pretends to be a sausage? So to me, I wouldn't say I want to have something that is non-alcoholic that's like interesting there are, yeah there's non-alcoholic spirits that apparently are amazing you know i can't see the point i would rather have like you say sparkling water or something you know i don't want a pretend one um which again i'm questioning i'm just saying it out loud because it's the way i feel i don't understand it totally. so um, uh, excuse me for interrupting yeah. in our last yeah. episode uh, we did not cover this in our last episode you actually yeah. said 
oh, we mm -hmm. should talk about non-alcohol drinks, but we yeah. never did. Now yeah. I'm now I'm understanding yeah. this point of view of why mm -hmm. pretend that you're drinking alcohol and not drink alcohol. Yeah. And part of I, the answer may be to support your brain. Maybe yes, exactly. And that's what I mean. I'm I'm still questioning that. And there's a bit of me going, if I'm going to say, for instance, I mean, I used to drink quite a lot of an alcohol-free spirit that looks at the same bottle. They are marketed that way now, you know. And yes. apparently they're brilliant. And I just go, well, why? You know. So I'm questioning that. I don't know. There's a bit of me going, oh, I'd rather have a proper gin because I honestly believe, Susan, and I really I'm saying this as I'm thinking and feeling that actually, and maybe this is what I was doing yesterday, you know, can I have a little bit of alcohol? Am I okay? You know, I'm testing it, I'm trying, I'm experimenting. So there's a bit of me going, well, would it do me that much harm? You know, um, so I think that's part of the process too, of going, oh, you know, maybe that's what I did yesterday. You know, maybe I did put it out there that I'm going to have a drink today and I'm going to see how I go. Um, because it is a little bit, and as I say, I have, rightly or wrongly, I've never vowed to go, I'm I've never stated I'm alcohol free and that might be a cop out that might be me just you know I don't know so it's all up there for question it's massive isn't it how much questioning I've got right and so th this it, this is a very interesting thing and I really want to get to this uh in the conversation about my one year anniversary uh yeah. that I actually made it through an entire year um, mm -hmm. you stopped using alcohol because you were diagnosed with cancer and because of the liver and the chemo and all of that. Yeah. I yeah. stopped using alcohol for a different reason. So we could say there are these different reasons and, you know, you want to know, um, I'm testing it, I'm trying, am I okay? Would it do me harm? I would ask you again um, to consider separately on your dog walks, you know, from my uh, former use level, which would be considered high, a oh, high yes. level, right? High level of use formerly. Um, wh how, what comes forward with me if I go forward using? So anyway, so, so why we stop makes a difference. So what happened with me was over the first um, six, seven, eight months, I uh, very much noted it. I very much was um, activated in knowing I'm I'm not uh, using alcohol. I go to the family dinners and everybody is, the wine is flowing prolifically and I'm not, at, you know, drinking and um, going out with friends to a wine bar or a bar or whatever. I would just have whatever seltzer or something. And I was very keenly aware of this. And as you and I discussed only five months ago in our last discussion, both of us said, well, I'm not ready to say that I'm alcohol free okay. and, and I'm not committing to uh, the permanence of that. Both of us were definitely, no, I'm just experimenting. I'm trying. I'm not saying that this is the way it's going to be forever. But as I came into more recent months, um, and it is something that I've noticed from the very beginning, um, the use of alcohol is so prolific, it's so profound, it's so detrimental, it's so deadening. Um, when you go to a party and there are people who are drunk, uh, you know, they, they, they're not, they don't think they're drunk, but you can see it clear as day from the overuse. Um, it's, it, it, it is notice, it has been noticeable for me how much people use alcohol from my being uh, completely clean of alcohol. So that is one thing that in this year's experiment has come up like, wow, how, there's a lot of alcohol use out there and there's a lot of misunderstanding of what high, middle, medium, low uh, disordered use is. Um, that's one thing. But the other thing, Nadine, is it has gotten so much easier now for me to say I'm alcohol free. I can say I am going to live the rest of my life being alcohol free, even though I'm not saying I will never drink alcohol again because I'm not an alcoholic. I never was, if I was going to be, <clears throat> it would have come after freshman year of college when I was completely overusing alcohol for my freshman year. Um, 
and then um, and but I didn't continue. I didn't sustain that lifestyle and that use. So I love being alcohol free now. It is good. It is so good to be clear headed and clear minded. And I can see so clearly how one drink can overcome a person, how it impacts them. I can see so clearly how one leads to the next. And once you're into two, you're into more. I can see so clearly how many people drink and drive. You go to a bar and you sit there at the bar having a drink and having a good old time and you have three drinks and then you get into a car like what, <laughs> you know, so um, I could feel it in my body. I could feel it in my very soul. Um, I definitely am aware that judgment comes in when I see overuse, when I see someone who's affected by uh, the use of alcohol. Uh, that's something I am I'm working on. I want to be working on. I will work on probably for the rest of my life. Um, for me, I'm lucky and grateful, eternally grateful that I'm not not using because I have a problem with it. If I had a glass of wine with my sister or something, it would be no problem for me to worry about uh, uh, perpetuating a, a former habituated use. But honestly, I am going to see my sister. I can't wait to go see my sister. And um, I have z less than zero problem now with other kinds of drinks. By the way, you, you did bring up sugar. One of my go-tos is mango juice with seltzer and lime. But like that's filled with sugar, of course, right? Mango juice is filled with sugar. But um, mostly I have, I don't know what I have basically water and lemon or seltzer or something like that. So um, I'm 62, Nadine. I'm 62. And you said it, I wrote it down. We're older women. Hormones affect us. How does your body tolerate alcohol now? Right. And I, and I'm aware. Um, and if you, if any of our listeners or viewers begin to tune into this, they're going to see a lot of motivational speakers, a lot of inspirational uh, people, workers, coaches, coaches, healers are alcohol free. If you tune into the literature, if you tune into this, you are going to see people um, who are speaking about being alcohol free and they stopped the use as they increased their research on what alcohol does to our bodies and our minds. So um, from my one year experiment, I can easily say uh, when I come over to see you uh, in England, I will be alcohol free. You may or may not be. It doesn't matter to me. I'll drink what I drink and you'll drink what you what you drink. But it's easier now. It took a long time in a year for me uh, to say this differently now than what we said what I said before in our last conversation, which was, I'm not saying I'm going to do this forever. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I wasn't ready, but now, um, is it morally righteous? Is it morally superior? Is it, you know, judging others? That I hope it's not. It's my commitment yes. to living a clear, clean, conscious life for me. Yes. And so, um, again, I had an opportunity to take a sip of wine. Nobody would ever have known it was sitting in my fridge. And like you just said, you said about yesterday, oh, I'm, I, I'm going to, I have to reflect on it. You said, did I need it? Did I make the right decision? Am I partly fatigued because of the alcohol? More likely you're fatigued because you have cancer and you're, you had a big humongous day, but you could reflect on that. But basically now I'm questioning period. Yeah. It, it's yeah. the most important thing that we yeah. come into active conscious awareness simply to ask ourselves questions. This week I had a conversation with a woman whose husband has um, alcoholism, although he's clear now. Um, she doesn't drink. She said to me, easy as pie. I don't drink alcohol. I, I don't drink alcohol. Like there was nothing like, oh, I'm not sure. No, she was clear. 
Um, finally, Nadine, I want to let you know um, that I did uh, find research, a, a, an increasing amount of research showing Gen Z is the first generation of humans who are drinking less. After COVID, there's lots of research of what happened in COVID. And there and lots of people, there's even a statistic of how many people between 18 and 24 died from alcohol related um, issues in the, you know, that two year arc period. But we are beginning to see Gen Zers drink less. And I assume it's from watching their parents in utter consumed alcohol use disorder and dying from that. So that would be a bit of good news. Has Have you become aware yeah. of this? Yes, definitely. And also in relation to smoking, you know, a lot of younger people don't smoke because of they've said it's, it's different. And like you say, you know, we can say it now. We can ease, much easier say, I'm not drinking. It seems to be more acceptable, doesn't it? Right or wrong as that is. But you're absolutely right. So it is happening. There is a difference. Um, and that's something to be celebrated, definitely. Um, but I, I'd just like to comment on it, what you said, because it really made me feel a lot. You stated, I love being alcohol free now. And that was powerful, a big, big, powerful statement. And in my little head, I was going, uh, I can't say that. So there you go. You know, I, I'm not ready to say that if I ever will be, if I even want to. But I loved that you stated it so proudly and so clearly. And I think that's wonderful. Um, so this is. Yeah, yeah. I, I just my sort of feeling to that was well I, I'm not saying that I can't say that at the moment or ever and that's okay we're different that's okay right. isn't it you know? so what were you going to say on that point so that's very interesting yeah. uh it's part of what I love about our conversations we have two different perspectives here you know we're we're, we're coming here having this conversation with the intention the deep in, intention and commitment to saying these things out loud encouraging people simply to think more right to think about it uh and you you know in a year from now you may be like oh remember when i said i couldn't say that myself now i'm all over it you know now i'm I like i love being alcohol free you know we don't know what the future is going to be yeah. three years ago nadine three three in a time in a long lifetime only three short years ago who would ever have imagined uh, you here today? And especially with a uh, relation to alcohol use, who would ever have imagined that you would have gone for a few years without using alcohol yes. at all for any reason? Exactly, who knew, who knew? And you're so right, the changes are there. I love the fact that we have all this recorded because we can reflect back, can't we, and go, oh my God, did I say that? <laughs> I don't say that was that me I I see even just looking at pictures of myself I go oh my goodness was that me I love the fact that this is recorded and we can do that um and I really just feel something else that I want to comment on as well when you said about you choose mango juice and that kind of thing I went oh sugar 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 I've got this thing it's going to be a conversation isn't yes it for us? but I and the, and again my mind goes to you know I used to choose to drink spirit thanks experience you know which is horrendous when you think about it but my choice part of my reason for choosing it was that it's got no sugar in no carbs no sugar you know I've always been having a problem with my weight and I know alcohol isn't that but my reasoning used to be I'd rather have spirit than sugar you know there you go again that's that's the reality that was what I used to think so you're going mango juice I go oh no I'd rather have a, a rum or something gin or spirit because there's no sugar and no carbs and that is you know, so, of do. course, that's connected. I have been lucky and blessed with amazing genes <laughs> and uh, a, a growing commitment uh, from my former days living in anxiety to uh, how a fit life impacts and affects you. Um, so I work out and sugar is not really a thing for me uh, to, to worry about per se, um, even though their studies show that sugar is one of the worst uh, drugs and substances for us. So we're, we're going to have a conversation about that. But anyway, yeah, yeah I, I'm always aware because I don't drink juice a lot. I know there's a lot of like uh, sugar in juice, but to the point that we're making that particular time, 
I was with a, a couple I met, I didn't know them very well. And I got to know them making new friends. And we went to a Mexican restaurant, I think just to, you know, and I didn't need to order. They had sangria or beer or whatever. And, um, and at that time I could have had water, but I made a choice uh, to go with sugar and ask them and then have a nice little tall straight glass, you know, with mango yeah. juice and seltzer and lime, you know, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and so I did have that on that day. Um, oh gosh, something is really coming up for me, like viscerally, like viscerally right now. I'm, I'm, you know, in my body and that is, um, hold on one second. This idea of this idea of why, what you're drinking matters in a setting why does what you're drinking matter in a setting so much of that is connected to mindset and now as we're saying this wow that was a real energetic thing that just came up for me and that's why um now i think i have to think more about this but i think that i have broken through like broken in half broken from broken through the idea that why what i'm drinking matters in our other conversations and you even said it today there you used to have peer pressure when you were younger and growing up and younger and social but not god forbid yesterday no, that wasn't not, the case no, not, not at all no, no not at all of course but um you know when people who are drinking want to drink and they are not comfortable if you're not drinking that might be a, a sign of something you know i don't want to drink alone okay well then don't drink at this dinner with me yeah, go that's go that's next time you're out with people who drink drink with them right that is definitely something that I felt so much in my past. And as I've said before, I was a people pleaser. I didn't want to upset anyone that I would go with the flow, but definitely not in my world now and definitely not what was happening yesterday. No, of course not. If, if anything, I, I, as I say, I might have instigated it. And, oh, you know, this is celebration. This is what we do. So it's really, really interesting, isn't it? But Right. You can is, think more on that as well yeah, i'm going to i've got yeah, it that's good but i'm going to do what we always do listen back to this at some point and we'll go through it but i really feel you know we've covered a lot today and like you say this is for everyone to just have a little think themselves we've got very different points of view different feelings and we're in different places you know literally and physically and emotionally so people can connect with whatever they feel inclined to can't they this is quite a well-rounded conversation which i'm Really it is. It's a good place for us to bring it a close, bring it to a close, uh, because our goal in going public with deeply, deeply personal, private information, the deepest, as you and I have done, is to show others that we can share what's in us with others and not die. <laughs> and as we said before in the green room, before when we came on, what we said to each other was, wow, it's so helpful to talk about these things with each other, to have someone with whom you can talk about it. If you're listening to this podcast or watching this video and you know to yourself in your head that you are lying or hiding, that you feel shame from that, in fact, that's the reason I asked Nadine when she revealed to us that she did drink alcohol yesterday uh, and we talked about the shame factor and you know you can say I'm proud of myself that I revealed that I asked that I brought that out because I know deeply that people lie and hide about their alcohol use and and that is a sign or a symptom one time, one time, if you lie about or hide your alcohol use, that's a problem. Otherwise, you just be like, oh, yeah, I had a drink at the, you know, oh, yeah, that, that you know, otherwise, it's, 
it's easy and free and there's no attachment uh, to shame or um, hiding or lying. And so we are not here to, um, we, we're not um, professionals in the treatment recovery area. Neither of us are. Um, neither of us are therapists. Uh, we are both coaches. Uh, we are here instead to be sharing real life stories from real circumstances that are deeply personal and uh, deeply difficult. And so Nadine, as always, I, you know, I feel emotional at, like, I know you're exhausted from yesterday, but I just feel emotional from, you know, what we're sharing here, what we're revealing and um, the impact uh, that this will have as people listen to these uh, podcasts. Very profound. And thank you so much for giving me this space to share, to talk about things. And it is, you know, it's so beneficial, I know, for us, for each other to talk like this. But we know it helps other people too. So opening up that conversation, you know, reach out to us. You know, we're happy if people have got any questions or want to reach out to us. But, you know, the, the, the benefit of sharing, you know, can't be underestimated, can it? Talking, sharing, getting things out there. Um, in any shape or form, it's so beneficial. So thank yeah. You. Finally, I want to let uh, people know that I do this work with a coaching tool that I call Under Your Surface. This is something that I've talked about here, and um, it's one of the deepest, uh, most amazing parts of my work in personal coaching, if that's of interest to you. Nadine is using her own cancer journey to support people who have cancer, people who have survived cancer, people who have family members with uh, cancer as your cancer coach. And um, we invite you to contact if we can serve you in, in any way. Okay, my friend, Nadine, um, we have another couple of pretty amazing conversations coming up. <laughs> I'll look me forward too. to it. Yes, me too. Thank you so much, Susan. Take good care.